I've gotten this question a lot after I posted my individual reviews of both the Lear and the Killarney Whistles, and I suppose I should have seen it coming. Before we dive into this too deep, a little bit of full disclosure, this whistle I bought from Killarney. I was just kind of curious about it, I'd seen a lot of people playing it, and I wanted to try it for myself, and I did a video on it, a review video, just because I felt like it. The folks from Lear sent me this one. They didn't ask me to do a review on it, but they also kind of indicated that they wouldn't mind, which I did. But nobody's asked me to do a comparison. So take this video for what it's worth. I just figure I might save everybody a little Q&A time doing it this way. So a bit of background, first of all. Both of these whistles are patterned off of the John Sint design. For those of you who aren't in the know, John makes very fantastic, handmade, professional, fairly expensive tin whistles. This is a B-flat, which is why it's monstrous relative to the D whistles. I don't actually own a John Sint D, so this is the best we can do, but the design is the same, the physics of the instrument are the same. So comparing straight away with the Killarney, you can kind of see the similarities, obviously same materials, brass, brass, same head joint design. They both have a, a common feature maybe we'd say, that they're very top-heavy. Some folks love that, some folks can't stand it. It's kind of a matter of personal preference, but that's just sort of a, a, a fact that you get out of this design. The, the, most of the weight is in the head joint, and that's why they're fairly top-heavy. Lear, on the other hand, takes a slightly different approach. You can see the similarities in the design, the head joints are very similar, but they've made their whistles out of significantly heavier, thicker bra brass. Yeah, brass. This one happens to be coated, I assume, in nickel or something like that, but it's definitely a lot more dense. The result of that is it, it adjusts the balance point of the whistle, which I'll get to in a little while. So hopefully you all can see kind of how this thing works. This is a fairly common way of making whistles these days. There's several companies, not just these two, that I'm, that I'm kind of taking a look at today, but there's a few of them that do that, and they're, they're all kind of based off the same design. When we compare these two, we're going to start with the head joints, because again, that is sort of the hallmark of this John Sint design, is this rather interesting, unconventional, at least at the time, design. You can see the similarities between the two of them. Different materials aside, when you look at them closely, you'd think they're just, this is a silver version of this one. A couple of differences that I can see here. First of all, this, this pin that holds these one, two, three, four sections together, three sections together. There's a pin that runs through that, connecting everything, and on the Killarney, it sticks out a bit. It's got these raised edges, whereas they've managed to make, make that flush mounted on the Lear. Not really a huge issue, just kind of an interesting design choice between the two of them. Otherwise, if you all can see that in this little overhead shot here, the Killarney has these almost like individual blades, like they were kind of flattened in, in, in phases, whereas the Lear is a much more rounded design. To my knowledge, it doesn't seem to have any effect on the tone, at least not that I can tell. Slightly different aesthetic look, I suppose. Now, I mentioned balance. That's a, a point that I harped on a, a fair bit in the video that I did on the Killarney. It's important to me, it may not be important to everybody, but it's a, it's a difference and it's something that, that jumps out at me between these two, so I'm gonna come back to that. I'll show you here where this thing balances. Right at, whoop, right about there. So you can kind of see where that's the center of gravity is in that. It's significantly, maybe about two inches or so north of the top hole, the B hole. Let's compare that here on the Lear, and you can see it's a lot closer the b-hole, maybe half an inch, quarter an inch, something like that. Significant difference. To me, that's one of the reasons that I like the Lear, and I think I mentioned that in the video that I did on this, is because it is a lot similar to the whistles that I'm used to playing. Now, if you're used to a style of whistle that's more balanced towards the head, then this is probably not gonna be a deal breaker. In fact, it may be a, an improvement for you to go with the, the Killarney over the Lear. It's just something that's, I would say, worth considering. Um, because you'll, you'll feel it immediately, at least I do, especially if you've been playing for a little while. If you're used to a whistle like, say, a generation, it's going to be a lot closer to that B-hole, and the Lear is going to feel a little bit more familiar to you. The trade-off for that, in my opinion, improved balance, is that it's heavier. So that's another thing that you're going to have to consider. Let's break out this handy little kitchen scale. We can see, do a little compare and contrast here. Let's spin that up, and we're looking at pounds. I'm American. I use Imperial. I will adjust as needed, though. There we go, 3.85 ounces. Actually, hang tight, I bet you I can do this on the fly. 
109 grams. Look at that, 109 grams. Okay, versus 3.85 ounces, 2.4 ounces. Significantly different there. And that comes out to 68 grams. It's a substantial difference in weight between the two whistles. A little bit of a peek behind the curtain here. When I'm recording these, I've got my mic, this fairly nice, hopefully, road mic. Sometimes I'll mount it on a boom over here. Point is, I take this audio, run it through this preamp thing into the camera, and then I apply a few changes to it. I'll do some compression, and I'll do some, some noise reduction, things like that, hopefully making the sound fairly decent. What I'm gonna do here for the purposes of this little test is I'm gonna eliminate all that. So right now, three, two, one, gone. Now we have no compression, no noise reduction. I've done a little bit of that in the room. I'm not gonna bother showing you that. There's blankets up, just to try and kind of dull some of the, the echoes. But this is sort of natural sound. First, a quick scale on both whistles. Okay, comparison. Here's the leer. very shrill on that high D. I, I wouldn't advise playing that high D if you can help it. And back to compressed, hopefully halfway decent sound. I'm wondering, did you hear much of a difference between those two? To my ear, this the Lear whistle feels a lot uh, softer. Um, that's not exactly a great adjective to describe sound, I suppose, but to me, it's it feels a little bit more fuzzy, a little bit more round. Those are the words that jump out to me. What does it sound like to you? This one feels more direct. Again, I'm not sure that those are great adjectives for, for music, but this reminds me a lot of, I would say a lot of my Gary Humphrey or um, Generation, a, a more traditional sound. Whereas the Lear sounds like the Copeland that I used to play, which is a little surprising because the Copeland is $400 at least and conical bore, there's a lot of differences to it, completely different design, but they have a bit of a different tone that I'm, I'm hoping comes through over this. Let's do a little bit of a real world test. I'll play a tune, I'll play a jig, uh, the Rolling Waves, only because it's kind of one of my favorite tunes. I'll play it on both whistles, three, two, one, compression off, natural sound. Here we go. A little bit more of a real world example, hopefully. What do y'all think? Which sounds better to you? If I had to pick, I'm picking the Lear. Mostly because of that balance and weight issue. The tone, it's different. I wouldn't say I prefer one to the other. They're, they're just different. Uh, sometimes I, I kind of would want that more old school sound. Sometimes I would want the sound that I got out of that old Copeland that I used to play. For my case, it's all about how it feels when I'm playing it and the, the top heaviness that I get out of the Killarney, it, it sticks in my head. I think about it when I'm playing. And I don't know about you, but when I'm playing, I got a lot going on. Thinking about the tunes, I'm thinking about the ornaments, variations, what the next song is. There's a lot that you have to work through as you're playing. And if I also have to think about, is this gonna fall out? Am I holding this right? Am I balancing it right? That's something I don't wanna have to add into my list of stuff that I'm working on. Now, obviously, that's something you would just get used to. If you played it a lot, I bet it wouldn't be very long before you never even thought about it again. Personally, I've spent so long playing whistles that are balanced closer to what this is, it just feels a lot more natural to me. So what do y'all think? Let me know down in the comments if you've played these. I know a lot of folks have Killarney. That's kind of the reason why I bought it in the first place was I did a bit of a, a unscientific survey and a lot of, of y'all are playing these, so that's why I wanted to check it out. If y'all play one or both of these, which one do you like better? Let me know. This video isn't sponsored by anybody, so don't worry about hurting anyone's feelings. Just let me know down below what y'all think. What sounded better to you in this video and if you've played them, 
I'd be curious what your thoughts are. I will see y'all in the next video, guys. Cheers. <laughs>